Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to MAGFest. Woo! Um, my name is Sarah Winters. Um, I taught uh, Shoto here last year, and I've been teaching uh, Japanese calligraphy around the country for the past 15 years. I'm a lot older than I look. Uh, I mean, I am a time lord, but <laughs> um, anyway, so um, Shoto is Japanese calligraphy. Um, some of you, if you've played Okami, um, you've probably seen all of that beautiful brushwork. Uh, I'm sorry, the panel is full. There is one space left. Um, did you uh, did you pay the sitting fee? All right, cool. All right, uh, I would suggest the door being closed then. Cool, thanks. Um, so we're going to be spending about a half hour going through techniques, history, etc., and then the remaining hour will be free, um, free calligraphy, and I will walk around between all of you guys, help you out. Um, you'll notice that at every station, sometimes some of them are shared, there's uh, different phrases or words uh, in Japanese for practice sheets. Um, you can try the one in front of you when we're at that point. You can trade with somebody else. I can tell you what all of them mean. Or if you want to learn how to write something specific, I can come around and help you. Um, so we're going to start. All right, so what is Shoto? Um, Shoto literally means the way of writing. Um, it is uh, Japanese calligraphy, which of course came from Chinese calligraphy of the Hanza uh, in Japanese kanji. Um, but Japanese has three writing alphabets. It has the kanji that you see here, um, hiragana, which is often used for verb endings, uh, particles, certain grammatical uh, statements, um, and katakana, which if you guys are writing your names and you don't have a, if you don't have kanji for your name, you won't have kana, you'll have katakana. Um, and that's the more angular sort of writing that you see, um, especially in a lot of manga for, for foreign words, loan words, um, foreign names have, have kana, uh, have katakana. So there's three main uh, types of shoto, although there's many sub subtypes. Um, and here we have three different characters going vertically downward as to what they are. So the first is kaisho. And kaisho is block style. So this is um, the way that you would understand if you're if you're doing um, a very sort of prim and proper Japanese. This is sort of like proper block tr block type. It's very angular. It's very structured. Um, then we have uh, gyosho, um, and this is sort of a more open style. And then finally we have social or grass style. And that, as you can see, in a lot of cases, you don't even lift the brush off the page. You're, um, for the most part, you're doing it in one singular stroke. Um, we're going to be working with kaisho today because it's the, it's sort of like the starter of, of, of calligraphy. Um, but if this is something you want to continue into and you want to sort of move into that self-expression where things go away from just understanding the structure and moving into sort of the flow of the brush itself, uh, uh, gyosho and sosho are where you want to be heading. All right, so we're going to then go over the Shoto kit, and unfortunately, I'm going to put down my mic, but I will, I will, um, I will project so that I can show you all the pieces because I lose a hand with this mic. Now, in front of you, you have a couple pieces from the Shoto kit, but not all of them. The first thing to have is your Kubo, the Kubo brush, um, and if you want to hold these up so everybody can see the different types of brushes you're wearing over there, some of these brushes are from China, some of them are from Japan, some of them are from Vietnam, uh, some of them are artificial, uh, some of them are door hair, um, uh, some of them are doorstep, and one of them is actually capital. All of these things make pretty good brushes, and as we uh, go through the course, if you want to try this brush, uh, if you want to try like the first step brush that we got, that we were talking about today, Wally, um, mm -hmm. just really start here, it's fine to do the dark here with you, although you can get really light if you take it out. Um, so all these other little guys are here, are practicing the brushes, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but you really want a brand new brush, that's what I, um, I teach this uh, for several times a year, at least six or seven. And our brushes don't allow to be um, Some of them are very old, and the Hanzo family is a very connected old uh, generation, and they want to be able to be very familiar. But I also teach children, and <laughs> some small kids are not as good with brushes, so I don't bring out the baby boys. Uh, and I do have to replace my brushes every so often. So all of you guys actually, when you're brushing, are going to find out a new brush, brand new brush, brand new brush. 
The second one is only two in the back. So if you're buying a starter kit, like you'll see usually you have your kit stores, people give out big bottles. This is a, um, a elementary school starter kit for sale. They don't come with a plastic sleeve. Um, these are for the thing that's in the green.
And then last but not least, my daughter, that you know, you know she exactly what that is, and I have my daughter as well. So when I got things up to this point, I actually have memories of that and I'm glad you might think about that. And that's a lot of fun. So that's what we found in uh, the basic kit, and those are all the basic things that you can for the kit. All right, so prepping and cleaning your brushes. We are now going to need everybody in that front row to um, bring your brush up here so people can see. So if you wouldn't mind being on the spot, if you do mind being on the spot, pass it to somebody behind you. And all of you guys are going to come up here and we're going to learn how to fix a new brush. If you have a cap on your brush, if your brush is not capped, you don't need to come up. Should be eight of you. All right. So when you get a new brush, Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody hold up your new brand new brushes. So you'll notice that when you buy a new brush, it's always going to come capped. The very first thing you have to do is take that cap off. The very next thing you have to do is take that cap and throw it in the trash. I'm, I'm being serious. Once you uncap a Shoto brush, you're never supposed to cap them again. You'll ruin the bristles putting the cap back on. The next step, and I will steal one of your brushes. Who would like to? So you'll notice that they're very pointy. Now, what do you notice about the brushes at everybody else's table? Is they're not, they are, they do have a point, but not to, not to, pardon the pun, this point. So you start from the top, and yes, you'll hear a crack. You're gonna slowly start working the glue that they were used that they used in shipping out of the brush until it feels soft in your fingers. Yes, it will feel like you're breaking it. Yes, a few hairs will come out of the brush. This is normal. And then when you're done, hold it up so people can see what it looks like when it's completely prepped for use. They will still have a little bit of a point, but it will be much softer and smoother. Thank you, everybody. So when you're cleaning these brushes, the best way to clean them is run them under um, cold tap water and slowly work the ink out with your fingers from the base of it towards the tip. Once the water runs clear through them, I like to roll them gently up in a paper towel. Um, if you have a brush rack for say, regular paint brushes, that will work well too. You'll notice that most calligraphy brushes come with a little handle on the back end so that they can be hung. Um, otherwise, store them horizontally. Don't stir them vertically going up with the brush upwards. Uh, that's not very good for them. Um, so that's it for brush maintenance. And you'll notice that there's a bamboo mat here. Rolling them up in a bamboo mat is also a great way to do that. You can get those at restaurant supply stores very easily or in Asian marts. mixing your own ink. Um, I'm going to come around to the front and I'll describe what I'm doing. Uh, if anybody wants to try this later, uh, they can come up to the front and during free use, I'll, I'll walk them through it personally. Um, what is your name? Flora. I'm going to be coming to Flora Station and I'll be describing what I'm doing. So this is Down, and then come back again, and you can see the 
Mixing your own is definitely the way to go. Cool? All right, so stroke order matters. And on most of the sheets I gave you, I've already given you stroke order. So stroke order is um, in English when you're writing a letter, if you're writing the vertical, if you're writing the uppercase letter A, there's three lines, left, right, across. It doesn't matter what order you write those lines. In Japanese, it does matter because the angle of attack for writing your things. Hi, are you? If if you're here for Shoto, I'm sorry. The panel is full. Oh, hello. <laughs> Doing well. Um, typically, although there are exceptions, it's left to right, top to bottom, center to outside. And you'll see the numbers here that sort of correspond to that. And you work from the middle, moving outwards. So you do that center piece first do the parts around it, and then do the bottom piece using the same set of formulas. Um, most of your sheets have those numbers written on them already for you. A few of them don't, and if you need me to write them out for you, I can. Um, unfortunately, I left the original ones I printed at home, so we had to reprint them here this morning. I didn't get time to write on the sheets. Um, so if you're doing kanji, this is very important to know because there's a lot of symbols that look almost the same, but the weight of your stroke, because of which direction you're going from, will totally change the final look of the, of the character. Finally, moving back to um, what I showed you before, how there's different forms of these characters. Uh, you have your Kaisho, which is the third one um, on the top but then you have all sorts of different other ways to write the same character. Um, this is the character for fish. Uh, and you'll notice on the far left, that was what it originally looked like when it was a pictogram, like how hieroglyphics is all pictograms and how it slowly morphed over time to all these different symbols. Um, and you'll see the third one from the right and then the bottom one down here are more in the Kaisho style and the other ones are all different sorts of self-expression. So once you start getting familiar with what a character should look like, you can start playing around with what you want it to look like. There's also eight different stroke types. So again, I mentioned that there's left, um, left to right, centered outside, up to down. Um, they, there's strokes that move in different directions. Uh, and I'll leave this up here for a reference. Um, so if you want to see how each of those strokes moves, um, that will tell you in what direction all of them point. And I'll come around and also help you. So we're going to start with something very simple. Um, we're going to start with a, a horizontal stroke. So now you're going to want to put your um, practice sheets away. We're not going to be using them just yet. We're just going to be playing around with the brushes and ink. And I'll come, I'll come to the end of each table to help you as well. So I'll be moving around. Um, I'm, I'm gonna put the mic down and I'll, I'll walk you guys through it. 